We're going to turn now to those arrests in that fake vaccination card scandal. Fifteen people are now charged with buying and selling forged cards. And prosecutors in Manhattan say if you were willing to pay extra, the suspects could even falsify official state immunization records. Here's Iowa News reporter Kimberly Richardson. Swimwear wasn't the only pawn she dabbled in on Instagram. Social media influencer Jasmine Clifford called herself anti-vax mama and through this site allegedly advertised and ultimately sold roughly 250 fake COVID-19 vaccination cards. The buyers, officials say here they are, some working in frontline and essential employee settings, including hospitals and nursing homes, all looking for a way to cut corners during COVID. Officials say this group paid Clifford $200 per bogus card. And by the way, when there's a fake vaccination card, that means someone has committed a very serious crime. Literally, that could lead to prison time for anyone. Clifford didn't stop there, pay an additional $250, and the 31-year-old from New Jersey would then allegedly reach out to her co-conspirator who worked here at North Ocean Medical Group in Patchog, Long Island. Nadezia Barkley had direct access to New York State's official vaccine database, which is linked to the Excelsior Pass, a digital certificate of vaccination. Authorities say at least 10 times, Barkley entered buyer's information into that database. Now, all involved, Clifford, Barkley, and all the buyers are charged in a scheme, officials say, dates back to May of this year. This is something we've never seen before. We've seen it in the dark web, but we've never seen it just broadly offered to the general public like it is right now. Demand for these fake cards is soaring as more require proof of vaccination. But buyer beware, handing over your personal information leads you wide open to possible identity theft. Okay, this is going to be very interesting. And I think that this might be the tip of the iceberg, so beware. I do believe this is coming because China and Korea, I think they already do this. Authoritarian countries already do this. We don't. So... So they have to approach us a different way. That's from the Wall Street Journal. How to show proof of your COVID vaccine on your phone. Yelp said users can filter local businesses listings by two new attributes. Proof of vaccination required and all staff fully vaccinated. Open table, the restaurant reservation service has a national map showing venues on its platform that require proof of vaccination and now lists vaccine required on relevant pages. If you aren't vaccinated, there are other reasons to consider it beyond this new damper on your social life. Your phone can already replace most of your wallet. Your subway pass, credit card, plane ticket, hotel keys, and soon even your driver's license. It's a great place to store your COVID-19 vaccine record too. Digital vaccine options vary from state to state. A national vaccine passport hasn't taken off in the US so states like California and New York are taking things into their own hands. However, going through a state-sponsored passport app probably isn't necessary, as most establishments are likely to accept either your original CDC vaccine card or a digital scan or photo of it. Like Washington State's guidance to businesses, for example, says originals, copies of photographs on a mobile device are acceptable. In other words, before you venture out into the world, get your vaccine card on your phone. Then check to see if there are other passport apps that might make for quicker entry to your favorite spots. Here's my quick guide. A scan a digital copy. Apple's iOS software update due this fall will include an upgraded health app. <laughs> oh, here we go. Where users can store verifiable immunization records if available. Google recently announced support for a digital vaccine card for Android users, but it requires government agencies or healthcare providers to implement the technology. Until those are more widely available, your best bet is to create a smartphone-based digital copy of your CDC vaccine card. On the upside, all you need is a clear image. You won't have to enter any personal data into a third-party website. More on that lower down. Sure, you could just take a picture and hope to produce it when the, a checker at the door asks for it, as long as it doesn't get lost among your thousands of pet and food photos. 
there's a way to scan it so that it is probably more readily available and you don't make people behind you wait both ios and android devices have a built-in apps that use your phone's camera to scan documents and they're showing you how to tap the scan card and all that kind of stuff da, 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 da. It, see if your state has a passport government provided records can offer an extra layer of verification and schools employers and venues could start requiring them your record should be available in the state where you received your vaccine not every state offers a verified digital record but here are a few of the major apps my ir mobile is an app that offers official digital immunization records for arizona dc louisiana maryland mississippi north dakota washington and west virginia new yorkers can register for the excelsior pass as long as you are fully vaccinated in the state of new york and 15 days have elapsed since your final shot your name birth date zip code and phone number will be required to verify your identity the pass which contains a scannable qr code and expires one year after your second shot can be accessed through the android app ios app website or a apple wallet visitors or new yorkers vaccinated outside of the state can show a photo or hard copy of their cdc vaccination card as proof you can read more on the new york's key nyc's initiative here people who receive vaccines in california can enter their name birth date email or phone number to retrieve their digital my vaccine record qr code there's your qr code what would a universal digital health pass system look like startups governments and nonprofits are racing to create a so-called vaccine passport or a digital health pass is aimed at helping people travel and safely move around in public wsj explains that what it would take to get a global digital health pass system off the ground all right this is a slippery slope folks i'm telling you this is coming and it might be coming more than just nationally but uh, for the sh short interim i think they're suggesting it it's friendly and it's cutesy right okay you, if you got your smartphone you want to go in the restaurant or get on a plane or whatever you can just take a picture of your cdc card oh but by the way if you really want the extra layer of protection you can get a qr code from your from your state it says you've been vaccinated along with probably other information and then maybe a year or so from now if covid continues you know maybe covid won't covid continues it'll be built into your phone because it's already in your phone they already have a tracker in, built into your phone already that's how they track the folks on january 6th they have a infection tracker for for, for a cd for COVID 19 right it's already built into the software of your phone so it's just another step in my opinion to go from the qr code that you handle yourself to you giving up your phone number when you when you get into when you get your vaccine and you get put into a database and that phone number automatically will translate into a is a, a, a number imsi number right so as soon as you as soon as if your bluetooth is on as soon as you walk through guess what it'll already ping your phone number and it'll already ping your information to see if you're vaccinated or not that's the simplest way to do it and they can do it put up the database cdc can contact can can actually collect birth death certificates and and uh, hospitalizations and in cases you know uh infection cases it can also host this stuff which could be another plus or minus okay whether in the vaccine if you've already had a covet test and or you've already had a COVID case or even been hospitalized and seen a doctor because you contracted COVID-19 and you built up immunities that's also another thing that could be could go in the database they can track this they already have the software to do it it's already built into the phone it's easy for them to build a database with you in it and basically it could be really simple the only, the only thing is get well really all it takes is software if, if somebody has a has an app on a smartphone and your bluetooth reaches out to their bluetooth and pings it should 
tell you whether you gives you a thumbs up or thumbs down or a green check or, or a red X. It will be just that simple. But a lot of people do not like to be tracked. If they don't, they think this is an invasion of privacy. And, you know, it's pretty close to the line. But if I were doing it, you know, my black pill self, this is exactly how I would do it. It's already built in the phone. It's too easy to do. They're going to put you into a database where you have a positive test. You've been hospitalized. You contracted uh, whatever uh, conditions of COVID. That's all, go, that's all in a database anyway. And then if you've been immunized, that's another part of the database. It's all there in the CDC anyway. You know, the only thing is it's randomized to where they can't individually track a particular person, right? So what if they do? It's easy to just turn it on. And once it's turned on, they can find out whether the, whether you, uh, you've been vaccinated or not. The, the, but the only thing about something like this is mission creep. So once they're into your phone, once they're into your medical records, into your database, and you are turned on, which they can do anyway. They can do anyway if they want to look for you. They can find you, you know, because your phone, if you got your phone, you're tracked. And most people do. The only thing is, is that, you know, say in China, like I said, if, if, you, know, you have a phone number for life. They can track you. If you go outside in China without your phone, they will arrest you, especially during the lockdowns, especially during the, with the COVID thing. They're going to arrest you. Walk, if they stop you or or you walk by, say, a police officer and your phone doesn't ping his phone, he knows that your phone's not on you. He's going to stop you. I don't think we're going to quite go that far. But as far as you getting on a plane, going to a restaurant, any kind of social event where there's a door, I believe that this is going to happen. This is a slippery slope. Um, it's, it's always nice and gentle when it starts off and then you look up and not only is it not voluntary anymore, it's already built into the phone, just like your, your COVID-19 tracker. It's built into the phone. You have to willingly turn off the Bluetooth for it to, uh, to shut it off. You have to willingly do that. You have to shut off the Bluetooth so that it doesn't register. And pretty soon you won't be able to shut your Bluetooth off. It is what it is, but we'll see. America's a funny place and it might not happen. But uh, that's just my two cents, and I'm just telling you guys, this is just your automation. This is your fourth industrial revolution at work, and it's going forward. And uh, good luck trying to stop it. All you can't stop it. All you can do is survive it. But anyway, that's all I got for you guys. This is BJ Sout, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.